Okay, so here we are at the tomato review for the wild pink cherry tomato. So, we're finally to that stage of the game where my tomato plants are starting to really drop the leaves and they're starting to get to that point where I got to get these reviews done before the plant dies and I lose all my tomatoes. There's a very short period of time between this point and where you'll lose your crop completely and not get any tomatoes out of it. So, we need to start getting these videos rolling and here we are. So, this is called the wild pink cherry tomato. And it is a pink type of a cherry tomato. You see it's nice nice and pink. Now, this is very unusual because I don't see a lot of tomatoes that are pink like this in color. So, that's kind of unusual to me. But, nonetheless, that's what it is. Nice and pink. And here's the leaf type. It's a regular leaf tomato, just so you know. That's what it looks like. And this is another plant. If you can grow it in a raised bed, 10 by 10 area, and you just let it sprawl, it'll put out thousands upon thousands of tomatoes. It's just I'm growing it in this little pail, and the pail is getting knocked over. The blight is hitting it, and all these other things are happening. So it's not being as productive as it should be, though I will get some tomatoes off it anyway. All at different times. You can see it's kind of just... Um, you know, different bracts might have like three tomatoes ready on it and it's putting out more. You, you, when, with these, and it, the thing to keep in mind with these cherry tomatoes is as they put out cherry tomatoes, you need to pick them off the plant right away. You don't want to generally leave your tomatoes like sitting on a ripe like that, waiting for either insects or birds or animals or disease to get to them. You don't want to leave them on there for that reason, but you also don't want to leave them on there because. You, the quicker you pick these tomatoes off the plant, the quicker the plant starts to go into a, uh, you know, a, a reproductive state where it just wants to just keep reproducing those red tomatoes. And you'll notice you'll pick these off. You wait about three days, you'll see a whole bunch of them red on there again. So, whereas I've been leaving this the way it was with the pink tomatoes, I'm not seeing any more of them really turn pink because it's slowing down. You pick them red ones off, and it'll within three to four days you'll have a whole bunch more just like this red. Pick them off, and boom! You got to keep that cycle going, and that keeps the plant healthy, and it just allows the plant to grow more, put more energy into the unripe tomatoes, and that kind of a thing. So just keep that in mind with these cherry tomatoes. You really got don't leave them on here like I have. I am only leaving these on here because I'm doing the reviews, but in general I, I'd be out here every day picking anywhere between three to four tomatoes off of each one of my plants and I got you know 150 plants growing so every day I'm doing that so I'm eating tomatoes every day so I have fresh tomatoes constantly and you can do that when you grow a lot of varieties like this especially these large cherry tomatoes and these can get pretty big in size I mean you can see that you know as opposed to my thumb that's not it's not quite a Campari sized tomato but it's definitely a large cherry tomato all right so I'll see you at the bench Okay, so we're up to the taste test part of the video for the wild pink cherry tomato. Okay, so this is a Solanum Lycopersicon Humboldtii tomato. So it's it's considered a subspecies of a tomato. It's I think this is one of those tomato varieties that they don't know if it's a tomato or a berry. Obviously, it's a tomato, but for some reason, a lot of botanists have trouble with this area. So it's that's the name of it but it just so you know it's like a persicon and I not like a persicum it's like a persicon uh, Humboldt eyes the correct botanical name will be in the description and a title so that way you know exactly what it is but it's it's not your standard tomato it's a, considered a subspecies of the st standard tomato all right so let me just give you a closer look I want to focus. You can do it. It needs that light to focus, I guess. I don't know. But uh, that's it right there. Try to get you in. It just doesn't want to do it, does it? So that's that's it right there. That's what it looks like. All right. And I'll give you a look at the tomato now. And you can see it's got a nice, beautiful pink color to it. It's got a beautiful pink color. It's a nice, healthy, pretty good-sized round cherry tomato. And 
it's a pretty good producer. I mean, this plant has really been pumping the tomatoes out of it like crazy. So it's definitely a good producer. I definitely like this tomato. I also like the fact that it's not your standard uh, like a persicum tomato. I do like to try other subspecies of tomatoes. And uh, it, I like that fact. But it is a pretty good producer. And it did good all the way up until uh, massive rains and the heat and all that stuff. But what else do I know about it? It's an indeterminate tomato. So it'll basically keep producing all the way to the end of the year. As long as if you keep it, you know, you trim it back and take care of it, it'll keep producing tomatoes. It's a regular leaf tomato as well. So that's about all I, there really is to say about it. Let's do our bricks. We are going to do our bricks test. I really like doing the bricks test. That's why I spent the money to buy this thing because it's really hard sometimes for me to judge the sweetness. This at least gives you a scale. When you see the number, I tell you it's a seven, you get an idea of where we, where I stand as far as the, the, the level of sugar. Yeah, about seven and a half. That's not bad. That's pretty sweet. It's a mild sweetness. Seven and a half is definitely a mild type sweetness. Okay, so it's a pretty good balance, but low in that balance. So, for example, I'm going to say 30 on the sweetness. Tangy's probably going to be around the same thing, 30. Might be slightly bit more tangy when you chew up the skin because then it really, a lot of tang seems to come out of the skin. But it's a very good balance, but it's mild. So it's not, the whole, it, it, the whole experience isn't real intense. It's a very, a very mild experience, but it's, it's well balanced. Let me eat the other half. And the inside was kind of soft on that one. I'm going to eat this one as a whole and see what it's like, you know, when you pop it in your mouth, just like that. Let me try to get the whole full experience. The whole experience is different than eating it half by half. Well, when you eat the whole thing, you kind of burst it open with flavor. It bursts right open. And then you got the whole skin you can chew up. It's much easier to chew the whole skin up and swallow it when you do it that way rather than trying to cut it in half and chew it up. So the skins weren't really that tough on it. You know, they were, you know, they were pretty chewable, to be honest with you. The inside was very juicy and soft. Very, very juicy. You, you, you could use these to make tomato juice. No problem. Throw them in your soups, your stews. Just cut them in half, throw them in the stew. They'll add a lot of real great flavor to your soups. But they did crack over here. You know, some some of them have been cracking. So, I don't know. It's, just, it's probably just the rain. I mean, the rain's been it's raining right now as I'm shooting these videos. But it's just been too intense with the rain. But what I can say is uh, there is like a, a f kind of an earthy tone with this tomato. It's not bad. But there is a slightly earthy tone. So in contrast to tomatoes you get from the supermarket, you don't really have any earthy tone. You just got the flavor of the tomato and that's it. With this tomato, you can taste like an earthy tone, which is fine. That's, that's perfectly okay. But there is some kind of an undertone to it and it kind of lingers on the back of your tongue after you swallow it. So I'll eat one more and then we'll end the review. It's a beautiful snacking tomato. I'm not going to deny that. It's not going to be, it, it doesn't compare to the, the black cherry tomato or the chocolate sprinkles. I mean, I'm not going to put it at that level, but it's a great snacking tomato. I have, I'd have no problem coming out here and, you know, popping six or seven of these, you know, at a time, eating six or seven off the vine. No problem at all. This is a very delicious tasting cherry tomato. I definitely recommend growing it. It's a different variety of tomato, so it'll give you something a little different to kind of play around with. You have to dial in your soil for it because this tomato is not your standard tomato, so it might like things a little bit different. Now, I, I'm, I do think I should have added a little bit more lime to the soil. I don't think I quite added enough lime. I didn't really follow my own paperwork. I think I undercut the lime because I was just too afraid of it becoming alkali. But in this particular case, I think I should have got a little more lime in it and... Uh, I think the whole plant would have did better, plus the tomatoes would have been really, really sweet. But all in all, definitely recommend it. I would definitely give this tomato a go. That's it. That's your tomato review for the Wild Pink Cherry Tomato. Like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.